Uh, we're going to talk now about uh, disruption. And uh, the question I have is, you've been studying uh, how technologies can impact in positive and in negative in, hu in humanity. Uh, what are you seeing from your studies that are really the technologies that are making a change? What are the social challenges that uh, technologies, the new technologies, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, uh, and all these type of technologies are really making a change? Yes. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for setting the big picture. I think that was very, uh, very important to give the big picture to everyone. Uh, I think the reason why we started this research, we're going to publish a report in, uh, in January about it, was it could be summed up to one question, which is uh, how can we reverse climate change and the destruction of ecosystems, and at the same time, uh, do it in a way that's economically and socially attractive to the largest number. And that's the global goals you mentioned, so that, that's, that's kind of a difficult balance. And I think if you look at a few sectors, like food, uh, water, energy, materials, for instance, you can see a, in a few interesting trends. So let's look at, at food. Um, basically, for food, we are going to have to feed 10 billion people in 2050, while we can't already feed correctly 7 billion. And we have a system that's already highly unsustainable, that depletes the soil, that emits a lot of CO2 emissions, and so on. So there's a few problems we can tackle. First, food waste, that's the most obvious one. We waste one third of our food every year. So you have companies that try to use AI and platform to uh, optimize food consumption at the retail level and the consumer level, or that use um, bio-based membrane on vegetables and produce to increase shelf life, to make sure we don't waste them between harvest and the consumer. Uh, then you have another massive problem, which is that we use way too many chemicals inputs into agriculture that depletes our soils. Today we have approximately one third of the soil to produce food that is already not usable anymore globally, and that's going to increase. So how can we feed all these people if we deplete our soils? And so we need to remove that. So you have companies that, for instance, try to use AI and genomics to uh, understand the microbiome, like all the, the microbes that are in the soils and the plants. So you can use these microbes for the plants to defend themselves against, against pests or to capture the nitrogen from the air so you, can, you don't need fertilizer, you don't need pesticides. That's much, much more sustainable. Another one is um, how you can also provide alternative and more sustainable uh, culture system for smallholder farmers. In developing countries, smallholder farmers, that's 80% of the food production. And you have, uh, for instance, uh, regenerative agriculture, agroecology, and you can use data and modeling to understand how species of plants would go best together to grow more effectively, to increase yields, and be sustainable. Uh, Sony has a lab in Tokyo and, and Paris and working in Burkina Faso to, to work with farmers to develop these new methods. And the big elephant in the room uh, is meat production as well, because um, Today, uh, meat is the biggest factor of the negative environmental impact in agriculture. Uh, CO2 emission, it's 70 per I mean, agriculture is 70% of water consumption. It's a lot of water pollution. It depletes the soil. And there's a lot of options for vegetarians. I'm a vegetarian myself. But I don't think we're going to move to global vegetarianism fast enough to tackle that. So you need to provide other options. And you have entrepreneurs who develop more sophisticated protein products that mimic meat, so either you do plant-based meats and you use the data modeling AI to understand plant protein and to recompose a product that's basically a plant-based healthy product but, ha but that has similar properties as meat. Or you can grow meat without the animal, so that's called clean meat. The idea is to use, um, basically it's like you would brew beer, but except that you use animal cells that multiply themselves and you can grow a steak or anything that looks like meat, but without all the negative um, uh, um, Benjamin, impacts. Let, let's, let's talk a little bit now about the tech for bat. Yes. What are the real risks that you see uh, about technology the, 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 the following years? And oh, what can we do to mitigate them? Oh, God, there are so many. Um, I think the first one, which is very simple, is that we shouldn't be either too techno-optimists and we shouldn't be either too techno-pessimistic. I know in Europe, sometimes we have a tendency to be very critical, and uh, criticism is good if it's constructive. And in Silicon Valley, you will say, oh, there's many techno-utopians. And I think there's a balance to have between these two extremes uh, to understand the risk, but also the potential. So that's the first one. The second one, and I think one of the most immediate, immediate ones, is uh, targeted advertising and uh, social media. 
Um, and that's basically eating democracy for breakfast. Um, I think, I don't know if you pay attention, but like with the, f the rise, and you, you, showed, you showed it, like populist and far right and neo-fascism everywhere. Well, one of the main tools of, this, of these uh, movements is using targeted advertising that, wa what, that was used to harvest personal data and sell you products with uh, targeted ads. Well, it's used to funnel uh, propaganda with targeted messages that appeal to people's emotions and, and fear of the, of the foreigner and fear of uh, many things. And you see uh, how it's being harvested by, uh, yeah, by the election of Trump in Brazil to engineer customized, uh, customized fake news that's going to reach you. Um, Steve Bannon, who was the advisor of Trump, he set up a foundation in Europe called The Movement, where he's trying to consult with all the far-right parties in Europe to give them uh, data advice and analytics and basically help them to target um, uh, voters for the European election next year. So I think that's a massive problem. And we need entrepreneurs to find new economic models that do not depend on targeted advertising because targeted advertising, it's, it's a nightmare. It's terrible. One final last question that we are running... Yeah. Uh, uh, late on time, is uh, there is a lot of uh, talking that uh, transhumanism and dataisms are like the new religions uh, for the future society. Uh, is that really uh, is that really like that? Uh, should we be worried about a society with the haves and the have-nots uh, on technology? A quick answer, Benjamin. Yes, we should. Um, Yuval Harari, who wrote *Sapiens*. He said in an interview recently that we're going to reach the first time in history where economic inequality could be translated into biological inequality because you would have people that could enhance their bodies, their cognitive abilities, even have designer babies. And we're already living in a world where you have like this small liberate, liberal elite that we are all part of here who are a bit disconnected from what happens in the countryside. Well, imagine how that's going to happen if this, some of these people get more and more power and the, po and the possibility to detach themselves completely from, um, from the rest of the world. And that we should be worried about that and uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. For Thank sure. you very much. Thank you, Benjamin. And applause for uh, Benjamin. Thank you. And